Hi and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy of Anti-Money Laundering. So in this video I'm going to talk about systemic risk versus money laundering and when can we say that money laundering constitutes a systemic risk. So I found this amazing definition on systemic risk by Ren from a paper in 2022. He defines systemic risk as having high complexity, transboundary effects, stochastic relationship and a non-linear cause effect patterns with tipping points and often associated with lesser public attention than they actually deserve because they tend to accumulate. And some examples of systemic risk can be environmental threats, financial crisis, we know that from 08. And due to their special features, these systemic risks are overextending the already established risk management and then they create new unsolved challenges for policymakers in risk governance. So when we look into these systemic risks, how can we relate them to money laundering? Well, money laundering is characterized by two main characteristics. The general characteristic that the money has an origin from criminal or illegal activity. And then the peculiarity character, uh, characteristic, which is that money laundering, the, the kind of process, the aim of it, is to, of course, by a really low transaction cost, conceal the illicit origin so law enforcement cannot backtrack the money to the origin and then also disclose the behind activities, the criminal and illegal activities leading to the, necess and the necessity to launder the money. So, here is just an extended uh, version of the stages of money laundering. So this is the complex version. Typically, we say that we have placement, layering, integration. But due to globalization and the regula regulatory efforts, we must say that these stages have extended so that we already see pre-layering. It's not the actual criminal uh, having earn the money that goes into the bank with the money or tries to get it into the system, they typically do a pre-layering, someone who collects the funds, a professional money launderer, and then the circle starts. So therefore, this is the extended uh, stages of money laundering. We have the placement, putting it in the financial sector. We have the layering, transferring it around to try to really hide the origin. Then we have the integration where it has to come back in some goods, services or purchases or reinvesting in other products for further criminal activities. And then the post laying where we get it back these products into the illicit economy again to, to support further activities, criminal activities or illicit activities. So when we want to see when is then money laundering, given these processes and the definition, when can we see it as a systemic risk? Put up here the main things about systemic risk. So one, the first demand is high complexity. So money laundering can have many uh, different ways of being conducted. I took the extended stage. But if you just take the classical, it could also be someone just earning some cash, not really um, disclosing them to the tax authorities, putting them into a bank, using them and getting a product out of it that you need to use. In that process, so you did do uh, illegal employment uh, that was not taxable, uh, taxable, and then you use the money in that process, you laundered money. But is that systemic risk? Well, not really, because there's a lack of high complexity. So we need some level of complexity in terms of money laundering before the money laundering risk becomes a systemic risk. So even within money laundering, within money laundering risk, we can, we can divide the type of risk. Typically, we will see a higher complexity of money laundering when it becomes organized crime 
when we also have high amounts of money or proceeds that needs to be laundered through a system. Because let's just face it, the more money you need to have laundered, well, the more expensive it is, but the more complex it is too. Because it's easy to just go to the bank with a thousand euros, but it's much harder to go to the bank with a hundred million euros in cash. So there's some level where we need to say at some point it becomes a systemic risk where because of uh, at least it, it does fulfill the requirement of high complexity. The second is the transboundary effect. And here again, we must divide it into kind of organized versus disorganized uh, group and the amount of money being laundered because what we can see that the transboundary effect typically will be used especially when we talk about high level of proceeds, a high amount of money that needs to be transferred around and in the layering process going through several countries. And when they do this, it has this transboundary effect, which means that the, the, the laundering of the money suddenly turns away from being just a uh, national issue or even just a regional issue or, or cr crime issue to being effect to affect more jurisdictions and then suddenly the problem arises because we need all these to collaborate and it becomes much harder to see and this is what the transboundary effect kind of represent in terms of systemic risk then it has to have a stochastic relationship that is uncertainty related to and randomness of these uh, laundering cases because they are so hard to trace because of the transboundary effect, because of the complexity and because we really cannot see who's laundering money and who's not just from looking at a person. The uncertainty and the randomness must say to be fulfilled too. There's typically a non-linear cause effect pattern because professional money laundering, and here we have to divide it again from non, like not organized to organized because non-organized, well, if you just go to the bank with the thousand euros, you just earn without paying your taxes, that is one thing and then you can use it. There you would see a natural, um, a linear cause effect pattern. But when you go to the more organized and complex setups, having cash in one country because of some crime in another country and transferring these funds through 13 other countries and maybe even using products instead of money at some point and then getting them back again, it becomes hard to have this really linear cause effect pattern because they might not be linked the whole process. We could see that, for example, with the Habala system. So to try to grasp this, the effect, the complexity and the externality problem of money laundering kind of defines whether it is systemic or not. We can start asking ourselves, is this a national regional problem concern or an international one? If we fall into the international, there's a high percentage, there's a, a high degree of certainty that we are talking about a um, money laundering becoming a systemic risk because it involves so many parties and it becomes even more complex to see, which means that you it's also harder to mitigate bec because of resource allocation. Is it uh, isolated in terms of a certain sector? Could we say, for example, that, oh, it's only the financial sector? No, because there's a lot of other sectors. So the systemic approach will say that it affects society, it affects multiple places, it affects democracy. Well, in that sense, it does comply with being systemic. But if it is a very isolated, small segment where we can see the processes being laundered, we might not consider it as being systemic. So when we talk about risk-based regulation, we must address all these uh, different types. And when we are within the regulatory field of money laundering, it is risk-based regulation. And there we must see, okay, so there are 
Money laundering risks that are systemic, there are some that are not. And we need to understand the difference in the complexity, the difference in the patterns to be able to monitor, to do transaction monitoring, and really to set up the perfect mitigative, uh, mitigation measures towards and to counter uh, money laundering. So this was just a short video on systemic risk and when money laundering can be conceived as a systemic risk, hence being systemic risk-based regulation and under that regime, and when is this just a regular risk and isolated into a certain area or certain specific agents. Stay tuned, subscribe to this channel and let's talk much more about money laundering.